Washington County get in, in Washington? Ensuring people get the full benefit of one of the most consequential tax cuts for working families in our history. We expanded the child care tax credit, the earned income tax credit, included in the rescue plan. In the past, if you paid taxes and you had a good income, you could deduct two thousand dollars per child. So you're making two hundred grand a year and you had three kids, you got to deduct six thousand bucks off your off the taxes you owe. Well that's fair. But guess what? If you're making minimum wage and you had four kids, you didn't get anything. It wasn't refundable. You didn't pay eight thousand dollars in taxes. It wasn't what you could re you couldn't reduce your taxes. So we made sure it was refundable. Because guess what? It's just as hard for a firefighter or a teacher or a cop who has the benefit of that tax break to raise his kids as it is for a wealthy person to raise their kids. No, and by the way, it's not a criticism of the wealthy. It's just to think about it. Think about it. It was well intended originally when, when the child care tax credit, when, when the child tax credit existed or early on, because he said, well, we've got to give a break for raising kids. But I remember it used to drive my dad nuts because we had four kids. It was a lot less. It was less than a thousand bucks then. But, you know, if you're making what was 12,000 bucks a year, that was like making 40 now or 50. If you're making that kind of money, you didn't have any taxes you could deduct from. So there wasn't any benefit for your kids. Look, that's why the American Rescue Plan, we didn't expand the amount. We expanded the amount, but I, even if we don't expand the amount, middle class tax cut. We made it refundable. We get paid back what you would have had to pay, and, and which, which you got to deduct if you made more money. So the money you go directly into your pocket, help with your kids. Для меня грипп и простуда это не просто плохое самочувствие. Дети без присмотра. Работа встала. Лечитесь всерьез с первых симптомов. Терафлю содержит четыре активных компонента.
Возьмите ипотеку Сбербанка для семьи с ребенком от 4,7%. Оформите онлайн на сайте Домклик. Saturday, and he believes in the power of 
uh, leader to leader diplomacy, uh, but I don't have a prediction of a next engagement at this point in time. And, and what about the oh, sorry, success? I wanted sorry, I didn't get to that last part of your question. Um, you know, the, how the, we define success is, I think, how a lot of our European partners and NATO allies would define it, which would be an, uh, a de-escalation, uh, a proven de-escalation at the border uh, of Ukraine, uh, where the Russians are pulling back their troops, uh, where they are making clear uh, to all to the global community, to the media, to the public, uh, that they are not invading Ukraine and backing that up with action. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, following up on, on this energy question, in mm -hmm. terms of the impact on our energy, which the President yeah. mentioned, and then the consequences here at home, what should Americans be prepared for? Worst case scenario, what should they ex expect if this happens? Well, I think what the President was touching on um, was the fact that um, if Russia decides to invade, there could be consequences here at home, um, and that could have an impact on energy prices, which could have an impact on prices at the gas pump. Um, and we're taking, while we're taking active steps to alleviate the pressure on our own energy markets, and every option is on the table to offset rising prices, as you saw the President act last fall, a range of options remain on the table. He also wanted to be very clear and direct with the American people about uh, what the impact could be, and the fact that in his view, uh, defending democracy and liberty is never without cost, but we need to convey to the American people exactly what that could look like. One more on Russia. If President Putin decides not to invade, does President Biden consider that a victory? I think the world, the global community would consider that a victory, but again, uh, I think um, what the President's view is, and what the national security team's view is, is that this is ultimately up to President Putin. And every step we've taken up to date over the last weeks and even months to coordinate with our NATO allies, to uh, stay in, lock, in close touch with uh, leaders in Congress and members about what our plans are, to put together a, um, a crippling sanctions package. What we are doing is we're presenting the choice to President Putin. He ultimately is going to decide which path he chooses. Go ahead. Um, Jen, I just wanted to uh, close the loop on um, a few things. So the, the <coughs> Ukraine has been experiencing a number of cyber attacks today. Yeah. Um, a, a number of its banks were affected. The defense ministry was affected. Um, has the United States attributed those attacks to Russia? Uh, I don't have anything on the attribution at this point in time. I know there have been a range of reports. Uh, what I can say is that um, we have been uh, in touch with the Ukrainians, uh, our allies and partners, uh, working with them to deter and respond to malicious cyber activity. Uh, we have also been warning for weeks and months, both <coughs> in our engagements with uh, the Ukrainians as well as our European partners, about the potential for Russia to conduct cyber operations in Ukraine, but I don't have anything more specific on attribution at this point. Okay, and just, uh, you know, kind of moving a little bit into the realm of the hypothetical, there are a lot of steps that... Oh, boy. I you know. And there are a lot of steps that <laughs> Russia could take that are short of an invasion, but that are still, um, you know, uh, aggressive. Yeah. Um, you know, including cyber, including um, there's this um, uh, step that their Congress has taken on re recognizing these breakaway regions in Ukraine as, as being, you know, a separatist, uh, legitimately a separatist regions. Um, would the U.S. respond to any, any things like that with sanctions as you would to, uh, you know, an actual invasion? We have conveyed before, and I'll reiterate now, that we would be prepared to respond uh, with a range of malicious activities or actions that the Russians are I know that um, you, there's, you know, you've said that there's very little daylight with you and, and European allies on this issue. Um, the German Chancellor said today that um, Ukraine joining NATO is simply not on the table. It's not on an agenda item right now. Is that how you would characterize it from, from the White House? Well, I think as you've heard the President convey, and you just heard him convey in his remarks, uh, our view from the United States is that nations have the right to sovereignty, to territorial integrity, freedom to set their own course and choose who they associate with. So we, the United States, were never going to pressure Ukraine or any country to join or not join uh, a global alliance. That is up to them and up to the uh, other members of NATO. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Jen. Just, you, you say all mm -hmm. options are on the table. Let's be more specific on the possibility of a gas tax holiday. Would the White House support doing that? I have nothing to predict for you at this point, uh, but all options remain on the table. He said in his speech, uh, if Russia attacks Americans in Ukraine, we will respond. Is there specific intelligence suggesting that some kind of targeted attack on Americans in Ukraine is possible? I don't think he was suggesting that. I think as we've conveyed, as we've warned, uh, and been very clear about the risk that would be posed to anyone who's in Ukraine, including American citizens, 
were running to invade, one of the biggest militaries in the world, that there would be serious risk to civilians. That's, I think, what he was conveying. With the Ukrainian president slated to be out of his country this weekend in the Munich Security Conference, um, do you guys think that's a good idea for him to be gone right now? I don't think we have an assessment on that from here. Uh, obviously, the Munich Security Conference is an opportunity for any leader to uh, engage with, communicate with uh, other uh, leaders in the world, and obviously the Vice President is going, as you know. It's been a busy day, obviously, with Ukraine, but has the President talked to any Supreme Court nominee? Have any interviews been scheduled? Let me just disappoint you here, Ed, um, and just convey that I think we're not going to give day-to-day -day updates uh, from here uh, moving forward about whether or not he's done interviews. What, you, what I can confirm for you is we're still on track to uh, for the President to make a decision and make an announcement uh, before the end of the month, which is 